Five signs she has a Jezebel spirit. Toasters, let's get into it. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. Toast to me. Toasters, as you come in, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share the content. Also, when this video ends, go to a toast to the men.com and check out what we have to offer. Five signs she has a Jezebel spirit. Now, I know a lot of us will automatically assume that this woman is going to use sex, intercourse, fellatio to get her way to manipulate, to dominate, to destroy. Maybe so. That is a tool that the Jezebel spirit can use or will use, but not, not necessarily always. Uh, she will use sexuality, which isn't always sex per se, but she would definitely use femininity. Femininity is a superpower of all women. I don't care who they are. All women have the superpower of femininity. Some some use it, some live in it, some vibrate it all day or most days or most hours of the days. Some only activate it when they want their way. Now, femininity is not a bad thing, just like masculinity is not a bad thing. It's all about intent, motive. What are you using with this superpower? What are you doing with it? How are you using it? What's your motivation? What's your intent? That's what it all boils down to. Now, the first sign, brothers, you need to watch out for is manipulative speech. Oh, yeah, man, you got to watch out debating with this woman. She'll change up the narrative. She'll tell falsehoods. She'll, she'll, she will uh, manipulate doctrine, religious doctrine. She will go to the Bible as a resource and change scripture. Yes. You can reflect on the conversation you had with her previously, and she'll rearrange the whole conversation. She'll say, you said things you didn't say. She'll leave out things she did say. Or she'll just say she has a bad memory when it comes to reflecting or going back to recalling conversations. However, when you recall the conversation and you recall it accurately, but if you throw in a fib, if you throw in a falsehood at the end of what you recalled, she'll call you out on it. All of a sudden she remembers verbatim the conversation when previously she had a problem remembering conversations, but now she remembers, yes, that was said, but that last part wasn't said. So this is how you know <laughs> she's been BSing you. She's manipulative and uh, you gotta watch her speech. You gotta watch how she changes the narrative. Man, prime example, when we were coming out with the book, A Toast to the Men, we went to a company that were bound the book. Uh, it was all outside people, and I was referred to this couple, older couple. They were maybe old enough to be my parents. I was referred to them by a pastor. That's very important. I was referred to them by a pastor. They were members of his church. Now, as they are bound in the book at their location, of course, they're reading the book, and the wife in particular was reading the book as she was going through it, placing in the pages, right? So, Two weeks later, we meet up so I can look over their work to give nay or yay. And so after doing so, about midway through lunch, I think it was dinner, she tells me, there is a problem I had uh, with your book. She's like, it's well written, but as I was reading it, I had a problem with Drink Six. Now, I won't go into detail too much, but Drink Six is about love and me not believing a man should fall in love with the woman but show a woman agape love, love her orderly and respectfully. And she said, no, I don't believe that. She said, I think a man should fall in love. And, and we just disagreed. I didn't think a man should be off balance. You know, people get hurt. People get killed when a man is emotionally off balance. So I, I don't believe in that. But I definitely believe in, in rewarding a woman, cherishing a woman, you know, treating her like a jewel you know, showcasing her, you know, spoiling her to an extent. I believe in that. But the brother got to stay balanced. It's my belief. So 
She said, well, even the Bible says God was in love with his people. She says the Bible says God was so in love with the people that he gave his only begotten son. She said that right with, with her husband sitting next to her, man. And I said, no, the Bible doesn't say that. It said God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And right then she started laughing. This is how I knew. She knew what she was doing. Yeah, she blatantly and purposely rearranged the scripture so she can control the narrative, so she can get her way, so she could win this so-called debate or disagreement. Now, she did this right in front of her husband and laughed when she was called out. And her husband said, yeah, he's right. The scripture does say that. He agreed with me. But, you know, he didn't reprimand her. Now, I don't know what happened at home, but I think he should have definitely called her out on that for, for blatantly lying. And uh, that's a Jezebel spirit, people. That's a Jezebel spirit, man. I don't care how old she is, how young she is. She can have a Jezebel spirit. There could be some old fools. And uh, that's just one example. But this stuff happens all the time, man. This is why you need to stay uh, studied up. You know, show yourself approved, study, you know, research, be equipped. And I don't believe in arguing and debating with women, but, you know, when you come with the facts, when you come with proof, evidence, it only takes a couple of sentences. You don't have to go back and forth. But uh, that has shut them down, just like I shut her down. But, uh, yeah, man, you got to watch out for that manipulative speech, man. You really do. The next thing is... Watch out for the so-called woke woman. Yeah, watch out for that, man. Watch out. It looks good on the surface. Oh, man, the aesthetics are beautiful. She might be natural, have the locks, you know, have the dreads, have the nose piercings. You know, she may go so far, you know, believe in holistic uh, rituals or, or remedies. She may not believe in shaving her legs or underarms. Man, you know, she's all about Black Lives Matter, all that. The black man is beautiful. She'll make posts about how she loves the black man. But, brothers, when you really sit and talk to this woman, you'll see that she's in competition with the man. She's in competition particularly with the black man. Right. She she really does. She really does uh, get off on being in competition with the black man. She thinks she's, she's better. She thinks she's superior to the black man but she thinks the black man is only good for physically protecting her anything other than that she has no use or if she wants to procreate but anything other than that other than that she really has no use for him yeah but you got to be careful with these women because on the surface brothers man it's a beautiful thing but I'm telling you, when you really get to talking to this woman, that woman too, I'm not saying arbitrarily the woke woman is a Jezebel, but she can hide behind this woke aesthetic. She really can, but you really got to listen to her, listen to what she's saying, listen to what she's not saying. She gets off on competition with the black man. She gets off on that. Stay away from that woman. Number three. She turns on femininity only when it's an opportune time for her. Man, I knew this woman who just got off and bragged on the fact that she was able to rip men and women to shreds with her tongue. She got off on it. She thought it was a good thing. She thought it was a beautiful thing. I'm telling you, she really got off on this. It, it was sickening. And, you know, uh, it was disturbing. But anytime she really wanted her way, she would turn on that femininity, activate the femininity, and she would get her way. Oh, man, it could be very charming, flirtatious, very charming, beautiful, beautiful woman. But when she wanted her way, she would activate her femininity and get her way. Other than that, very aggressive, exerted a lot of masculinity, very argumentative, very confrontational. But again, on the outside, man, it looks like a beautiful thing. And if you caught her at the wrong or right time, depending how you look at it, you would think she was a submissive, feminine woman when she really wasn't. Watch out for that woman. Number four, she's always the victim. No accountability. No accountability. She's always the victim, man. 
brothers, when you're courting these women, dating these women, uh, really listen and listen to what she's not saying. If every story she's in, she's the victim, that's an issue. If every man has been the villain, the antagonist, and she's never played the role of the villain, she's never played the role of the antagonist, that's a problem. Also, she may shoot you some half truth, half lie, and still not be accountable. For instance, she may say, yeah, I cheated, I cheated, I did, but it was only because he did first. Listen, it's either part of your principles, your character, or it's not, period. You know, stand on your own two on what you've done. Accept what you've done. Be accountable for what you've done. Don't point the fingers. No one can make you do something you don't want to do, right? So it's either part of you or it's not part of you. But be fully accountable. Watch out for that one because you will get lost in the sauce, brothers, because you'll be like, damn, she did admit she cheated, you know, but you'll you'll just negate or not realize the fact that she just told you she just gamed you up have truth have lie or have none accountability and uh you gotta be watched for that because she'll justify her wrongdoing by your actions yeah she'll justify her wrongdoing and she'll blame it on what you did when really it's just a part of who she is period number five Man, this is the controlling spirit, very manipulative spirit, and this is the selfish spirit. Now, this woman, in the courting dating process, she would tell you what she likes, what she loves. She'll tell you she loves fine steaks. She loves this type of wine. She loves crab legs. This is her favorite color. This is her favorite movie. Man, she'll go on and on about her, what she likes. And she'll never look into what you like or don't like. She'll never do that. Right? And you could be courting or dating this woman or even married to this woman for years, man. And she can't tell you what your favorite color is. She can't tell you what your favorite meal is. It's all about her. Entitlement selfish it's all about her in the courting process man you got to be careful too because she may even ask you a question like this she may say or ask are you romantic brother that question isn't solely about you it's about her trying to see if she's going to get romance out of you because if you tell her you're not romantic She's immediately turned off. And that could be the end of you guys communicating. Period. Another thing with this woman, you constantly have to repeat things to her. She don't remember things you've told her. Important things she doesn't remember. Because she's the most important thing. She'll even cut you off when you're telling a story. Because she wants to place herself and tell a story about her that's just like that. And she won't remember what you said, what you've told her. You got to repeat stuff constantly. This is the entitled woman, the selfish woman. Stay away from this woman. I'm telling you, brother, stay away from this woman. This, this, this woman is a problem. Now, the bonus sign. The bonus sign is the silent treatment. Yes, the silent treatment. This woman, you may call her a spoiled brat. But what she does, she activates the silent treatment on you when you piss her off, when you don't get her get your get her way, when she doesn't get her way, uh, when she's displeased with you, when she wants to make you suffer, she will implement, activate the silent treatment. And she only does this because she knows you're into her. She knows you're digging her, she knows you love her. So she activates the silent treatment to to hurt you to punish you yeah this is narcissism also but this is narcissism and the jezebel spirit are one and the same so really detach yourself from this woman and this woman can only implement or activate the silent treatment on you 
when you're tied to her, when you love her, when you're attached to her. So, brothers, you got to, uh, if she's not willing to straighten that out, you got to really dissociate yourself with her. And it's going to be painful. There's going to be some pain. There's going to be some discomfort, you know, and you're going to miss her or the whole nine. But, man, if you really want some peace in your life, you got to detach yourself from her, man, because this woman can have a strong hold on you like no one's business. Yeah, man, be be very wary about this type of woman. Be cautious, be cognizant, be on alert. This type of woman, this is a powerful woman. Like I said, man, the, the, the Jezebel spirit is the most powerful demonic spirit out there, man. For real, nothing compares to it. So you got to be careful, watch out for it. Hey, as always, from me to you, love, peace.